we are going to light the fuse and run away. We're going to take a firecracker with a mass of 1.0 kilograms. Yes, that is a very large firecracker. And we are going to, as I said, light the fuse and run away. That is the initial position of the firecracker. The firecracker is then going to explode into two pieces. We're going to call piece A and piece B. So we have two different pieces. The mass of piece A is 0 0.25 kilograms. And the velocity of piece B final is going to be equal to 12.0 meters per second to the right. Now, this is an explosion. So momentum is conserved. So we have the sum of the initial momentums equals the sum of the final momentums. And what we're trying to find is the velocity of A final. What is the final velocity of piece A? We have the initial momentum of the system is equal to the final momentum of the system. In other words, the momentum of A initial plus the momentum of B initial is equal to the momentum of A final plus the momentum of B final or the mass of A times the velocity of A initial, plus the mass of B times the velocity of B initial is equal to the mass of A times the velocity of A final, plus the mass of B times the velocity of B final. Right, that's what the sum of the initial momentums equals the sum of the final momentums works out to in this particular case. Uh, working from left to right, tell me something, Knickerbocker, we know about something in here. Um, your initial velocity is zero. Of what? Um, or, no, just, um, oh, just, of just more specifically, both, both of, one. Pieces. of both pieces. Nope. The velocity of A initial and the velocity of B initial are both equal to zero. This whole thing has a velocity initial equal to zero. So the whole left hand side actually works out to be zero. Okay, on the right hand side, we have the mass of A, which we know. We have the velocity of A final, which we're trying to find. We have the mass of B, which we do not know. What we're going to do for the mass of B? Right. Um, subtract 0.25 kilograms. One thing that we're going to assume is that the total mass is equal to the mass of A plus the mass of B. We're going to assume that we have, uh, that no mass is lost during this explosion, which isn't quite true, but it's good enough for what we're doing in this class. So what we get then is that the mass of B is equal to the total mass minus the mass of A, or 1 minus 0 0.25. The mass of B is equal to 0 0.75 kilograms. Now, we should be able to look at this situation before I even plug in numbers and know some things about the velocity of A final. Tell me something we should just be able to intuit about the velocity of A final. Uh, Meredith? It's going to be negative because? Uh, well, we know it's going to be negative. I'm, I'm just talking about not because of the equations, just because of we should be able to intuit from what happens here. Um, Nick? Uh, if B is moving to the right, A should be moving to the left, which is negative. Yes, I agree from the equations we can get there, but I'm also trying to just be able to intuit some stuff here. We should also be able to intuit the magnitude of velocity A versus B, considering the masses of the two objects. Right. Well, the velocity of B will be less than A. Notice, because B has a larger mass, it will be moving slower than A. So we should expect the velocity of A final to be negative and to have a greater magnitude than 12 meters per second. And it should work out that way. The mass of A was 0 0.25. Velocity of A final is what we're looking for, plus the mass of B, which is 0 0.75, multiplied by the velocity of B final, which was 12. Um, we get from there negative 0 0.75 multiplied by 12 is equal to 0 0.25 multiplied by the velocity of A final. Therefore, the velocity of piece A final is equal to negative of 0 0.75 times 12 divided by 0 0.25. Negative 36 meters per second. 
And as you can see, it works out to be negative because it's to the left, and the magnitude is greater than 12.